hello for one it is danny and welcome to this update video so today makes it 90 days to the official start of the 2024 atlantic hurricane season and this is the first of my weekly countdown videos to the official start of hurricane season so later in this video we'll be talking about uh, all the different variables that will be affecting what happens this hurricane season and the fact that the season is expected to be very active you may have been seeing the news all over the internet you may have been seeing those videos as well and uh, of course i've been talking about it but now i'm going to be talking about it even more but first things first let's get into what is happening across the atlantic and uh, here we can see that there is all of that activity and that is associated with a surface trough and it's going to be low turn around for the next couple of days but with that trough there is an increase in wave heights out there so we'll be talking about that later in the video but then as we head closer to the united states and the vicinity of the bahamas we can see a lot of activity there as well even some thunderstorms so with that frontal system in the area there is an increase in activity but then as we head toward the caribbean we can see that there isn't too much happening right now but there are some cloud clusters moving in bringing with them some intermittent shower activity so as i speak let's go on to the rainfall forecast and this is for the rest of today we can see uh, some of those colorful shadings for parts of florida and the north uh, the northern bahamas so there could be some additional heavy downpours as we head through today much not really expected for the central and southern bahamas as well as the turks and caicos islands and then as we head to cuba the cayman islands jamaica parts of hispaniola puerto rico the virgin islands and through much of the lesser antilles there could be some additional showers moving by and that's already happening for some areas such as guadalupe even uh, dominica barbados and down towards the grenadines as well so as i said there are those cloud clusters moving in so there may be some downpours as we head through today even for the abc islands as well and then down to northern south america some areas may experience some heavy downpours such as in colombia parts of venezuela the guyanas but too much is not expected on a very wide scale and then going to central america there may be some passing showers across some areas all the way from panama up to mexico now it is going to remain quite windy in parts of the eastern caribbean also for the bahamas and the turks and caicos islands we're seeing some of those dark purple and those blue shadings popping up but uh, things may be a little bit on the more tranquil side as we head over into the western caribbean for areas such as jamaica cuba the cayman islands and even parts of central america as we head through this morning now as i mentioned uh with that trough out there that low pressure system we can see that these wave heights are definitely uh greater and so as we head more towards those shades of yellows those oranges and those reds that is increasing wave heights so out there we're seeing those red shadings up to 15 16 feet in wave heights and we can see uh that it's affecting parts of the caribbean so the atlantic side of hispaniola puerto rico the virgin islands even parts of the lesser antilles as well likely experiencing some more unsettled seas maybe up to six seven feet in some areas same story for the bahamas and also the turks and caicos islands and then in the caribbean the highest uh waves are offshore colombia as we can see right there and elsewhere across the region not very very active right now so anywhere from below a foot up to five feet in wave height now the atlantic hurricane season so we're shifting focus now to the long term and so this hurricane season is undoubtedly expected to be a very very active one uh, as i said earlier you may have been seeing it in the news you may have been seeing different posts regarding the hurricane season and uh, many persons are underestimating what could happen bringing up uh, statements such as we say the same thing every year and nothing happens but the past several years have been very very active and just because your area didn't experience anything that does not speak for the entirety of the hurricane season so you may not experience a hurricane or a tropical storm but there is another country that has been through it and is even still recovering to this day so what you experience does not define the entirety of the hurricane season last year produced 20 storms back in 2022 there were 14 named storms but notable hurricanes such as fiona and ian 2021 produced 21 named storms and there were major systems such as ida and then 2020 the current record holder for the most active season in recorded history it produced 
30 named storms and surpassed 2005. So yes, for the most part, the past few seasons have been very active. So it's just a matter of whether or not you are affected, but the seasons have certainly been active. Now let's talk more about the forecasts. So there are two new forecasts. West 2, which is a television station in Florida, is expecting 16 to 20 named storms, of which 8 to 10 could become hurricanes and 3 to 5 major hurricanes. And a major hurricane is basically a cat 3, 4, or 5. Next, we have South Florida weather, expecting 19 to 22 named storms, 10 to 12 hurricanes, and 4 to 5 major hurricanes. So, Again, the, sea, uh, the forecasts for the season are definitely calling for a very active one. And uh, by the way, the average number of storms is around 14. Previously, it was 12. But with increased activity, gradually, the average number of storms have been increased. And that's not necessarily good. And an average season doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, there won't be anything crazy. Because, I mean, there were 14 storms in 2022. And we had Ian, which is uh, one of the strongest hurricanes to make landfall in Florida. So this hurricane season is likely to be somewhat of an exacerbated version of last year because I mean in El Nino last year, which uh, El Nino usually results in less tropical activity due to increased wind shear, which are those winds which basically interfere with development. But uh, there were above average temperatures and that is why last year was so active because of the very warm surface waters. This year, El Nino is going away and La Nina is likely to take hold as we're going to be heading into the peak of hurricane season and different climate models are expecting that. So let's take a look at a few. All of these are multi-model ensembles and so we've got the climate forecast system here. Now this is an anomaly map, a temperature anomaly map. So the uh, cooler colors, the blues indicate below average temperatures. Meanwhile, the yellows, oranges, and reds indicate above average temperatures. Now, La Nina is the cooling phase of the Enso region in the equatorial Pacific. So we can definitely see those cooler temperatures expected. And that is for August, September, October, the peak months of the hurricane season when we see the most activity. Next model can sips we can see similar story here above average temperatures over in the atlantic and a la nina over in the pacific and then a final one nmme expecting a similar story here la nina over in the pacific warmer than average temperatures over in the atlantic and just to put into perspective of just how warm the current surface waters are for the north atlantic here is a graph right here now i know it may be a little bit confusing but stick with me so on the x-axis we have the different months of the year we've got january february march april may june july etc and then on the y-axis the vertical line going up is temperature now the higher these lines are the higher the temperature is now all of these different lines right here these are for previous years and uh we can see this orangish one so this is for last year and we can see that the line for 2024 well this was for february 21st so it's not current uh but we can see that it is running higher than last year so sea surface temperatures are a lot warmer than normal and of course as we go along this x-axis this line is gonna go up why because we're heading to spring and eventually summer when we have the warmest temperatures across the northern hemisphere so we're going to be heading into summer and uh so what we've covered thus far la nina that is going to result in more activity because of reduced wind shear wind shear essentially interferes with tropical cyclone development next warmer surface waters that is the fuel needed to get these tropical systems going now let's talk about the potential of more impacts so that is another concern for the upcoming hurricane season. And uh, here is the CANSIPS model again, and this is the total accumulated precipitation mean month anomaly map. So this is for May, June, July, essentially showing the anomaly in terms of above or below average rainfall for different areas. Now, May, June, July, that's typically when the rainy season kicks in for parts of the Caribbean as well. Now we can see these green shadings indicating above average precipitation. And uh, 
uh, on a wider scale, even as we head into the heart of hurricane season, we can see that there is a potential of more impacts provided the above average moisture or rainfall expected in areas such as the Caribbean. So that's still not saying, okay, St. Lucia, you're going to see a landfall this year. Jamaica, there's going to be a landfall. No, we don't know who is going to get hit this year. But the general idea is if you're in the area usually affected by tropical cyclone activity, it is good to be on guard. It's good to uh, keep your eyes peeled on what's happening out there because there is a chance that you could be affected because you're in that risk zone. So I'm not saying that you'll be affected by something this year. However, it seems as though we could have a stronger subtropical high because that is the steering mechanism for our tropical cyclones. When it is stronger, we typically see more impacts. When it is weaker, many systems curve out to sea, and that's what happened last year. Many systems uh, stayed offshore, but this year we may not be so lucky if there is a strong dominant subtropical high pressure system out there so of course guys i'll be talking about this a lot more as we head into the next several weeks and we'll have a lot of predictions rolling out in their numbers as we head into april next month but that is what i wanted to share with you in this update's video so essentially we could see a more active season and there is a chance of even more impacts based on what the uh, different models are showing so i really do hope you found this video to be very informative uh, that's the purpose here to be informative to let you know of what could be on the horizon and if you have any questions do feel free to leave them in the comments i'll be sure to respond to you when i get the chance to do so and remember to always be otherwise.